Hey guys, what's going on friends and family? My name is Skylant and today's rant is definitely going to make some people sensitive. It's gonna maybe tickle a rash or two uh, on your heart for some of these games because I know some of these games you spend a lot of time in them. A lot of money too and they can be beloved. In fact, I straight up talk to people in real life where uh, I would I would just say, I'd be like, hey, this game is now considered by most people generally pay to win, especially the community that it is technically slotted in, such as the MMO genre. And yeah, we we're talking about Black Desert right now a little bit, but it's gonna it's gonna expand a little bit more, guys. Don't worry. But basically, yeah, I'm like, hey, Black Desert, uh, it's more pay to win than ever, and it's it's pretty much always technically been pay to win to some, to to probably a lot of people, most people maybe. Um, so yeah, what do you think about that? And then that person to my face would say, I love Black Desert. And then literally would not would not continue the conversation. It's just they love they love it. Does it doesn't even matter if it's pay to win or not. And that is actually what we are mostly talking about today. I've already done lots of videos where every little time there's a new update with Black Desert Online, I would be like, hey, it's more pay to win than ever. I've always said it was pay to win. I mean, just slap me in the face, tell me I'm wrong, but here we are now. Here we are now. It was pretty fucking obvious that this this was gonna happen. Every single video, hey, it's a slippery slope. Even if you don't consider it pay to win, this isn't good. Sky, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, Sky. You don't know anything. You barely play. Okay. Well, I barely play because I realized like what a fucking like, you know, casino the game was. What a grind and what a life stealer it was. Okay? So, anyways. Um, Black Desert Online has had a new update. We're not gonna go into detail of it, but basically. Most people are considering it pay to win. And that's what I want to talk about is when does a game for you become too much? Because I've I've actually really looked up to a lot of people and their reviews and their criticisms. And then suddenly with certain games, it seems like they give them a pass. And maybe you guys have seen this, um, especially with like Destiny, uh, you know, games that really can be addicting. Uh, RPGs or card games as well. People falling in love. Like I remember Total Biscuit talking about Clash Royale in such a positive light, which yes, it is technically a competitive game. It is an esport, and I played it a lot too. But the moment I realized how much money I'd have to spend to to really compete in the game, I mean, same thing with Hearthstone, right? Like, oh my god, um, you know, and not only that, but like how unfair the game is, whether it's competitive or not. You're getting matched up with people higher level than you who have just objectively better cards than you. And if you spend money frequently, then you will be playing against a more fair or even unfair advantage in, in your favor. And you, you'll have a better time. Actually, it won't be an uphill struggle. So whether you think it's pay to win or not, it's definitely pay to not lose, right? It's definitely pay to, for convenience debatably, but sometimes convenience is winning. Especially I'm going to move back to Black Desert Online when it comes to sandbox games. And a lot of people don't realize this, which is something that I've been debating for a lot of MMO coming out because they are sandbox and they do or are trying to have these unique real money transaction systems such as Albion Online. I know Crowfall is going to do this weird VIP system, which emulates Eve to an extent and Eve Online also is a pretty freaking debatable. But there's just a lot of sandbox games that have the ability to spend money, which allows you to bypass inconvenience to an extent. Uh, so such as just blatantly leveling up faster or just making more money. Albion Online is, is just clean cut. You will make more money, you will get more material, you will level up faster to the point that it is three times faster, actually. Debatably, you might make three times much more monies. Uh, you will just be three times the player because the game, it's not like a little tutorial and you're just bypassing the tutorial, which is something like World of Warcraft whenever you buy a level booster. That's different. That's like skipping in line in Disney World. You can buy the line skip or, you know, the expedited line passes. That's different. You still have to ride the ride of what the real game is, which is the end game. You still have to actually do the do, right? Uh, but with sandbox games, the leveling process is basically the whole game. You are always going to be grinding, you are always going to be leveling, you are always going to be directly interacting with the economy, and you are always going to be fueling your guild. So players, and especially entire guilds, that have more money, have more impact, and impact is the game. And if you have more impact, especially in games like Albion, you can win a season in Albion. Your clan will literally win. You can win the game. Crowfall, you can win campaigns. That is an issue. The guild that has more money or, you know, has more people with the VIP access and stuff like that will have an advantage. As small as it is or as big as it is, it is an advantage. So 
when this, this but this is where the video comes into play when does that advantage which i think we can all admit there is some you know it might be minuscule but when does it become pay to win for you and I even if you do have a strict definition of pay to win can you still have fun in these games so bdo is more more pay to win than ever so you're gonna have just just one percent of the population that's actually paying to win but does that one percent ruin it for everybody i don't know uh that's debatable you know we we could debate that that's exit that's what i want to do i want to raise the question does it ruin it for everybody and do, is the inconvenience in the game do, does that actually totally pervert everything about the game can't, can't you still have fun sh, sh, i mean is it even wrong to support the game because i mean if you're having fun uh, even if even if you think it's bad for the community even if you think the game is toxic i mean hey you personally that's all you should care about you, you it's number one right you got to take care of number one and if you're having fun why not buy a pet or two or a costume sure right question mark no really question mark is it wrong so in a recent video i talked about how we should always give mmos another chance because every individual mmo even the individual servers are unique instances of the game because an mmo is more than the physical game physical mechanics it's the community. Each server has its own community, has its own gameplay, basically, especially RP servers. Um, but you guys said, no, fuck bless. It doesn't deserve second chances. Don't give them the time or money. But that's what I want to ask you guys is then why are you giving so much time and money to Warframe? And I, I mean, we are becoming more aware of Warframe's issues. I mean, every forum post about Warframe is becoming a little bit more woke, uh, how we're realizing how Oh man, this is gonna sting. It's gonna sting, but basically how pay to win the game is kind of. Now I'm full aware that that's gonna wrestle some jimmies, but just compare it to stuff like Diablo or Path of Exile, which actually Diablo did have like a little pay to win kind of scheme going on, but they changed it and they have competitive PVE. They have competitive leagues. Path of Exile the same way. And there's a number of games that you can actually speed run that are online games or otherwise. And there's other games that, like, like I said, with Albion, or debatably as pay to win as it is, you can actually win. Like online games and MMOs can be competitive in different ways, whether it's an esport, a lobbied kind of thing or otherwise, there is competition to be had. And any sort of real money transaction is going to affect the gameplay. And it absolutely should not, in my opinion. For the love of the art of the game, it should not. And Warframe is a game that does, you, you can't speedrun Warframe. You can't have competitive leagues unless they have a totally separate like entity with that. And since we've seen with the PVP, they refuse to make that non-debatably pay to win and a totally separate entity. Well, yeah, we can uh, we can assume now that, uh, you know, if they even try to, they, they, they probably won't. I don't think they would ever do a competitive league. As popular as the game could be, you know, they would have to actually tighten up the game so much. Uh, it's just, it's too buggy that the core fundamentals of the game are too light, actually. And most of the gameplay, the content is just toy spam. Essentially, it's a toy box, right? So they're just giving us lots of new toys, you know, the procedural generated zones, the new open world zones, and lots of new toys, uh, which is weapons and frames. And uh, yeah, you basically just spam us with different modifiers. And I I'm starting to see a trend where things aren't actually as new as it could be, as good as it could be. And it's because they're making so much money because you got guys are on that grind treadmill, which is really also like you're either on the grind or you're just spending tons of money or both. Their Warframe is one of the most lucrative games out there. And a lot of people think it's still some small little game with some small little studio. It's a, it's an underdog story. No, it was, but it quite quickly and almost instantaneously became one of the most addicting, addictive games out there. And one of the most lucrative it is. And that is because of its monetization scheme. Black Desert Online, Arc Age, a lot of these games are just just a casinos. They're just like, they're either filled with loot boxes or the game itself is a loot box, a loot toy box. You get fun little toys, sure, but they're like little toys. You get fun little boxes. Like, you know, it's, it's a lot of little light content that sure you can mix and match and debatably on paper, it seems really deep, but it's really just a really big, flashy, noisy casino. And yeah, as a video game, the visuals, it feels good. BDO, Warframe, sure. But they're gonna increasingly become, like they're gonna slide down the slippery slope. They're gonna become more and more pay to win. They're gonna become more uproarious with their grind to incentivize, you know, paying stuff. All the new content that they ever expand into will have some sort of cash shop item involved in that as well. And more often than not, then they're just gonna add stuff to the cash shop. Just straight up period. Hey, here's, you know, cash shop shit. 
Uh, and if it's just cosmetic, that's fine. But in these kind of games like BDO, it's not. And in these games that you can never really be competitive, I I don't think, to me, it's worth playing. That's my personal opinion. It's not actually worth playing. If I can't game the game in order to win the game in some, in some whatever way, you know, everyone has a different win condition. So if I wanted to do leagues or speedrun Warframe, I can't. I can't even really PvP. There's still a ton of grind to even begin to do PvP, even if it's equalized and, and pseudo kind of balanced, not really, fuck. It, I can't really play Warframe. But at the same time, I, I do play Warframe, you know? And I, I actually do jump into BDO because the visuals are fun. There is still some social stuff that I can jump in and, and just hang out with friends, you know? like. You, you can still jam, you can still have fun just walking through a casino. You don't always have to participate in the, the gambling and, and all that. You can still go to Vegas, you can have fun with friends, you know, what happens there stays there. You can, you can jam, but uh, you, you're kind of feeling the fire in a way, and it makes me feel bad. As a content creator, it makes me feel really bad. Which is why, even though Clash Royale was my most viewed stream of all time, and I could have had an entire career branching off from that, I refused to continue playing that as a content creator. Because I have a conscience, and I'm not gonna promote something like that. As much as I love the cartoon, actually, and I love the concept of Clash Royale, God, does it kill me. I can't support it, you know? I can't do videos on BDO. I really don't like doing too many videos on Warframe. They do do some good things, and you know, if you go into the mindset that it's never gonna be a competitive game, it's all about the grind, I, I just think that's marketing. You know, and that's the only reason why Warframe is more successful than Destiny. Not because it's just blatantly, objectively a better game, but because going into it, your mind, your mindset is a little bit different. You know, they kind of rope you in maybe a little bit easier because it is free. You can potentially grind for all the content. Um, it is definitely better as a monetization scheme, but that doesn't mean it's the best. And that's the point here is that if we don't aim for the best, then they're going to take advantage of us. Do you see what I see in BDO? Do you see what happened in Arc Age? Do you see what's happening in Warframe? Do you see the slippery slope that's happening? Where maybe the monetization scheme never gets, you know, worse, but the content that they're delivering to facilitate that, it becomes grindier and grindier. The game becomes lighter and lighter. And you notice that they keep branching out in random different directions instead of solidifying their core gameplay and instead of actually expanding and really pushing that core gameplay into something bigger and further and faster. It's, it's a lot slower development than it should be for such a lucrative game. So that's my issue. BDO, it's, it's remix, it's remake is bullshit. All the money they're making from that, what? An Arc Age, what, what, they give us fresh start servers. They don't actually really go above and beyond. And, and even if the game is like really pay to win in the beginning, you know, maybe they could have started like that. Some games start buy to play and then go free to play and they're more generous as they get more players, they're allowed to be. But no, they clench harder on our hearts and our wallets. And it's uh, it's straight up manipulative. It's 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 an addiction, actually. And I really hate that word. I really don't like thinking of video games like that. But the idea of gambling, the RNG, the loot box, the chasing that kind of dragon, it's very real. And we're seeing this in action RPGs and in MMO especially. These online games, if you're not addicted, like I said, it can be fun just to jump in and hang out. And I have spent money in BDO. I have spent money in Warframe. $200. Uh, because I wanted to make content and I uh, wanted to play with friends and to keep up with them I I needed to spend money actually or a lot more time and I don't have the time and the whole game is literally just a time sink Which then just you know you go down that rabbit hole So I think it's really tragic because these kind of games could be so great and whether you like them or not I think I just want to end this by saying I think we can all admit that it's not as good as it could be so at what point though is it worth it? A lot of people will say, well, it's worth it. You know, Warframe is a grind. It, it, the point of the game is a time sink. The point of the game is to be repetitious. That, that's the point of the game. I, and I would say, that's not really fair. That's, it could be better. It could be more. Uh, but some people, you know, the same thing with BDO. That's the point. The point is to waste time. I think that that's a really bad mentality. But then again, a lot of people play clicker games and things like that. So I, there's still some gamification with that. There's still something you could do with those games. The, the, the point of those games is is to click and, and to accrue and, and to grow, and you can actually gamify that. Even if there is no finish or win, there is still gamification. 
And the, the issue in, in the gray zone with these games is you can be more efficient. You can do things more smarter and work harder and play more and you can do more and you can have an impact on other players. But you can also spend money to pervert that gameplay flow. So if the point of the game is the grind, then would you not consider it pay to win if you can skip that grind? That's all I'm going to leave you with, guys. So that's my thoughts and feelings. I am really critical, but um, I, I think it's about time more and more people are saying stuff. But we really need to be more vocal about companies that continuously hammer us with this shit. I'm honestly, I'm tired of fanboys defending shit like this because in every single instance in the modern era, it has only gone downhill or never gotten better. And Warframe specifically, and especially BDO, is a game that started out okay, decent. Actually, Warframe was objectively paid to win in the beginning, but regardless, um, they started out okay, and they only have just with all the money they've had they haven't really done better with their monetization scheme but of course that's that's the question was it worth it is the, all the new content flashy graphics and new updates for bdo worth it what about warframe all that new content the, the new toys the, the frames the, the guns and the new expansions and all these weird little modules that they add on to the game is it worth it let me know what game has a monetization scheme that might not be the best but is actually worth it and I think I'm just gonna end cap by saying an example that I think is worth it would be a game like uh, Smash, actually. Smash Ultimate coming up. It is a game that is not free to play, and I feel that any competitive, especially fighting game, should be free to play. Uh, that's just kind of how I feel. Of course, I'm fucking weird and artsy, uh, but it's worth it. You're spending a, you know, a chunk of money, $60, for a ch fucking big chunk of content. And there's other games like Overwatch, where you buy the game, and you know loot boxes are really bad and it's all cosmetics though but then you get the whole esports scene and you get you get so much out of that and that's because of the fuel that players are giving but at the same time it totally has gambling loot boxes and it's like ah but it's just cosmetic i don't know there is a gray area and that's why i'm making this video it's controversial as fuck so in the comments below please converse thanks for watching guys keep the hype alive my name is skylant and i'll see you again next time